Hi guys, it's Hatch on How's everyone doing? Good, good, good. I hope today I'm reviewing Hatria by Angela Champagna. This one's been a long time coming and it's going to be a tough review. I feel like it's a tough perfume to review, but I wanted to review it because I know there are a lot of rose aficionados or rose lovers out there. And this is a great one. A little bit odd, a little bit tough to describe, but I'm going to do my best. So, Angela Champagna, Italian lady, she is the perfumer, she is the visionary, she is the brand. It is her baby. She comes from a small place called Atri on the Adriatic Sea in Italy, and she likes to incorporate a lot of mineral type elements to her perfumes, considering she's from a, a windy place on the coast, and she likes salt and things like that. She's got some really, really abstract perfumes, but my favourite one is Hatria. It's one of the most approachable, uh, and normally I like things that are a bit more out there, but in terms of roses, this one's a solid one, and that's why it's in my collection. So, so it came out in 2015, and I will tell you the notes. The top notes are Jasmine, Cloves, and Saffron. The heart notes are Oud, Caramel and Rose, and the rose here, as far as I know, is a particular type of Italian rose, which is yay. You know, so many perfumes have Turkish roses or rose from the south of France. You don't often see ones from other countries, so it's nice to have an Italian rose perfume, which is what sets it apart. The base notes are Labdanum, Gaillac Wood, Cipriol, uh, then you've got Sandalwood, Patchouli and Musk. She doesn't mention salt, but I definitely feel something salty in here. So, this is my scent of the day. It's my review of the day. The bottle looks like this. It comes in 100 mils, it comes in 50 mils. I will post a link to Angela's website where you can buy these fragrances. Uh, she doesn't really say much about them though. It's quite minimalist. Very chic Italian, you know, here's the perfume. Just buy it. Uh, so maybe reference Fragrantica if you want to find out a little bit more about each one of them, but Hatria named after, I'm guessing, Atri, where she's from. And this lid is quite spectacular. This is actually, it feels like solid steel or iron or something. It's like raw iron or something, I don't know. But it's a Rosarium. It's meant to represent a church window. She has a perfume called Rosarium. So yeah, it's a Rosarium, so it's got a religious connotation in there. But let me spray it on my hand. Actually, I'll spray it on my arm because it's drying on my hand. Not that I'm not wearing tons of it already. I mean, it's kind of everywhere right now. <laughs> the opening to me is the most interesting part. Needless to say, the rose is the star of the show of this perfume. It does not let any other note shine. And to describe the rose in here, to me, it's, it's very bombastic. It's very loud rose. This is not a demure fragrance. This is not a dainty powdery rose. It's definitely powdery but it sits somewhere between jammy and powdery, leaning more towards powdery. If this is the center of the universe with jammy on this side and powdery that side, it's probably somewhere over here, if that makes sense. So it's kind of loud when you first spray it. It's, it's an in-your-face rose. It trails everywhere. I actually smelled somebody wearing this on the London Underground once because it's kind of distinctive in that way. So the other notes in here, so I get a definite saltiness. There is a touch of a mineral element to it, which is, is the twist and what is the signature of her style. A lot of her fragrances can be cold and kind of somewhat transparent, but this one is very forthcoming. It's very just obvious and in your face straight away. The caramel is something that I thankfully don't get. I have read a lot of people that say they do get that. I'm glad I don't because Gourmand is not really my thing. And then the Oud is interesting too because she's managed to beat it into submission with a rose. The rose really does kind of blanket it and you can feel that there's a woody element there but it doesn't feel like a Middle Eastern style rose Oud at all, which I also really like. The powder is what overtakes everything here. The powder, the jamminess, the rich, voluptuous feeling of the rose. So. It's allowed to shine and I like that. 
it's one of those ones where it's I get different things every time I smell it right now I'm getting a kind of a dryness to it it's it's really interesting because it's got soft tones but then it has very aggressive ones as well so it kind of pulls you all over the place and that's not a bad thing I like fragrances that keep you guessing and take you on a little bit of a journey the dry down of it for me lets the oud come out a little bit more the saffron is kind of sometimes there and sometimes not it's not a, a massively apparent saffron in any way but it's she's what she's done is she's allowed the rose to shine and then she lets everything else just touch or just give its tiny bit of character here and there sometimes sometimes not and that's why it's a tough review because when you have a rose that is so overtly rosy a lot of things have to take a back seat so you have to kind of find them and that's why I like this it keeps me guessing and I have to constantly second guess myself and think oh hold on a second so that's why i think it's worth trying and it's not very well known which is also a plus i'm just giving you this as a if you're a rose lover that likes to actively seek out roses this one might have gone under your radar so yeah anyway the drying stages although the fragrance is fairly linear i feel like if the caramel is if I can smell it anywhere at any point it is only very slightly in the dry down but it's never gourmand ever never never gourmand so don't let that worry you if you're not a gourmand lover because I am not either touch of spice there from clove but it's again not massive everything else has to just you know bow down to the queen of the rose in this perfume it has a great projection the sillage is incredible i mean like i said i smelled it with someone on the tube and they had gone around a corner so it was following them behind in a big trail and the longevity seven out of ten i think it's fantastic i get eight hours out of this i don't ever need to really reapply it but i do because i like the opening where you do get that kind of mineral thing and that salty thing mixed in with this beautiful rose so that is my review it's a good all-rounder it's a rose with just a touch of a twist and something a little bit different so that is my review of Hatria by Angela Champagna anyway hope you guys like this video I'm Archie Fomano trying to make the world smell better one video at a time goodbye <laughs>